Alright, today we are making a beer that I have been interested in for a while. Never even tasted one. Here's the, the grains are needing to be emptied, but I've read about it. Drew Beecham put an article in Beer Advocate, and then there's another blog post that somebody did that I can link to that uh, it intrigued me, so I thought I'd give it a try. The idea is you make a pale wort, and then you get sort of stout-like characteristics from other methods, such as, oh, ha, I don't have them out here. I have them in there. Uh, cocoa nibs cacao nibs, however you like to pronounce it, and coffee. So you get some chocolate and roasty coffee flavors from those ingredients. So we're going to see how it comes out. Here is the pre-boiled, pre-fermented wort right now. I'm just bringing it up to a, a boil. I'm gonna aim for the mid to upper 1060s, hopefully. And I can go over the actual ingredients. I did a little clip of them, but we can go over that later. In the end, we'll have a tasting. And uh, it's been below zero out here today. It's about five above. I had to shovel this morning, so I have a nice pile of fresh snow for cooling the wort down in the ice bath. So that water is gonna be cold. I'm also doing some freezing chilling some other water down for the ice bath this is already freezing over so this is what you got going on in the northland you got uh, cold temperatures to work with and you can use them to your advantage in the winter so catch you later okay so my plan for the cacao nibs is three ounces which I have right here I have never actually used these things believe it or not, but that's uh, three ounces. And um, I have six ounces of vodka. So let's see if we can do this without making a mess. And if I make a mess, I'll just clean it up. So here we go. Let's build a couple. So we will soak this for it says four days. I don't know why it wouldn't matter if I did it longer. We'll see if we get a little uh, color out of it or not. And it has been um, nine days and it is down to about 10-10. Uh, I haven't uh, tasted it, but it should be pretty neutral. I suppose I can give it a quick taste as long as we have a second here. Smells uh, clean. It tastes clean too. I mean, right now, it just tastes like a regular, clean beer, mostly malty. There's a tiny bit of hot bitterness, not much. Yeah, so I've had it above 60 to uh, fully finish fermenting. I'll bring, bring it down to my cold room, which is probably like 40 or so now, and let it sit for however long and then rack to a secondary and then we'll do the coffee for only about 24 hours before uh, kegging so what I might do is uh, put the coffee and taste it after 24 hours see what it's like and then see if I want to leave it another day or just want to keg it right then but uh, so far so good so the cacao nibs in the vodka it is Saturday today, and I did this last Sunday, so however many days, about six. I'm going to strain it here. That's going to be my uh, attempt. Let's give this thing a smell. Yeah, I can smell it, and I imagine we'll be able to, to taste it. Whoa, let's see here. So what I'm going to do now is put 
this part in the freezer and according to a little spillage there that's uh that's all right according to drew beecham a uh, fat cap will form on the top and you can uh, pull that off and you'll be left with your perfectly strained chocolate uh, tincture and then I'll figure out how much to add. It looks like I've got six ounces is, is right here and that's a cup so that's eight and uh, so I may or may not add the whole thing but I'll I'll figure that out. Meanwhile the beer is um, down to about 10 11 ish I'll get a final determination when uh, I keg and I am uh, racking it to a secondary and so it will get some coffee beans at some point and I will leave them in the secondary for maybe a day like I said I'll taste it and if it needs one more day then I'll leave it a couple days so here is the white stout I am going to add the coffee I got it gently swirling with a sanitized racking cane here is four ounces of coffee it's just a dark roast coffee I had on hand nothing particularly special it, I weighed it out but it comes out to about one and three quarters cups by uh, volume at least for me so hopefully this will just kind of go in there get too jammed up. I'm not too worried about splashing, aeration, stuff like that. I mean, I guess I could be... I weighed it out twice because I thought it seemed like it was more than I expected. So now maybe I'll give it another little swirl now that they're in there. And tomorrow night, I will take a sample and see if I have the coffee flavor I, I want. If I do, I'll keg it right then. If I don't, I'll leave it maybe one more day, but I know that one to two days is about all they normally leave it. So we'll see what it's like tomorrow. We're going to keg this white stout. Here is the extract, cacao nibs, vodka tincture. It was in the freezer, so it's kind of condensed condensation. But I ran it through a coffee filter yesterday just to clear it up a little bit more uh, for whatever that's worth. Now, here is the beer, and I tried it yesterday. It was not super coffee flavored. It had been at 43 degrees. I brought it upstairs, and I don't know why it only got up to 54, but that's what it <laughs> got up to. So it's been on the coffee for 48 hours. I'm not even going to taste it again now. I'm just going to go ahead and package it because it was a little bit of coffee yesterday. I'm sure it's more coffee now. Got down to 1013. So it's going into the keg where it will get carbonated and we will do a tasting. Take, a, a Take one for the team. Take a... Let's take a look. Slow get that instead. get that glove out the way, son. Alright. A white stout. There she be. Okay, everybody, we are wrapping up this experiment that you have seen lots of footage on. Oh, with you, me you as usual. Yeah, I shot a lot of footage of uh, the whole process because I don't know how many videos, I, I did look to see, I, there are videos of, of brewing a white stout, but um, there wasn't the kind of video that I was, that I would have made, that I was interested in watching. That's kind of how I got into this whole video making thing in the first place, is what kind of video does do I want to watch, or would I want to watch if I wanted to learn how to do all grain brewing, so I hmm. made that 2006 classic. Wow, man. Good it's times. It's like home brewing itself. You Good gotta, times. I so, want to drink what I want. I want to watch what I want. Welcome back to the program. We're, this is a different video, so we're going to cheers it up again. Michael Dawson <laughs> and Chip Walton. Well, yeah, the other one You can one tell it's different because I got my hat on it's now. It's a different sort of video. The Pico one. We're just doing the Pico. We're double, double duty here. So, White Stout Lager. Now, oh, um, I think I did... I don't remember if I said in the previous video clip. I think I did actually, but the coffee... 
was in the beer for two days instead of one day. I tasted it after one day. It did not have as much of a coffee punch as I wanted. So I left it for one more day, which is going to be about 48 hours um, when I packaged it. I also put the uh, cacao nibs tincture in the bottom of the keg, racked it onto there, and it's been in the keg for a week, and here we are. Now what I also did is I had a little extra beer that wouldn't fit into the secondary carboy, so I just racked it into a little jug, a little brown jug. And so this is the beer with no carbonation, but also no coffee and no chocolate. Yep. So what do y'all think of all this business? <laughs> Go. <laughs> I like the I like the version with coffee way better. You asked me if I thought it was too much coffee. I said you're asking the wrong guy. I love he did coffee. Say that. Uh, I think it's a nice level. Um, it's really punchy, complex. It adds a lot. Having tasted the base beer, which is much more mild and just kind of a, basically unremarkable, you know, it's just kind of like a, a souped up high gravity blonde ale. Mm -hmm. um, but the. It's not dry nibbing with the cacao nibs. It's the tincture, the tincture. of the nibs and the, uh, and the coffee. Uh, yeah, it, it tastes stout-like without the, the roastiness. I will admit, when I heard of a white stout, I thought kind of it would taste more exactly like a stout. Before I even knew what that meant, I just thought somehow you just removed the color but we're literally drinking the stout flavor. But then once you sort of think about it, you get the stout flavor from the grains that are going to give you the color. So that's when you start realizing, oh, they're doing coffee, they're doing chocolate. Um, so this is not like you're drinking a stout with all of the black color, but it does have different flavors. I mean, you could almost just call this chocolate coffee, you know, Blonde, 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 or, blonde. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's essentially what it is. And we talked about it. if this was a commercial environment, you would most definitely have to have the word coffee in the title, or at least as a, like a, a style door. subtitle, yeah. Because if people just ordered a white stout, I could see them potentially being put off uh -huh. by the level of coffee. In our case, I mean, that's exactly what I wanted. I forgot you were calling it white stout. I just kind of thought we were going like... Coffee blonde. Yeah. Which is like, what's the difference? Well, in the, the experiment is to make a white stout. I have to give a shout out. I don't know if I did this earlier, but uh, I will do links to these places in the description of this video. But blog.kegoutlet.com, those fellas did a white stout that they did a nice write up on how they did it, then they did a nice write up on the tasting. I actually interacted with one of those guys, got a couple of tips about what I might do in my beer from him. And also Drew Beecham has a article on Beer Advocate about his white stout. Mm -hmm. And I did a mashup of uh, processes from both of those guys to get this. As Don always wants to do. As I am. You mash up a lot. You do a good bit of research. You don't just find a recipe and like, I'm going to try that. Like I need to find three sometimes, of these and synthesize sometimes. them. Well, if I'm making a dandelion one, and I, you know, then I'll just like, yeah, read up about all of it and put something together. So I don't know. It's it's it'll probably be around a while. It's probably not mm -hmm. going to be a beer that I'm going to drink too hard. And also, I do feel like the coffee character will mellow, and that's why I did it for another 24 hours because I wanted to be like too much coffee or bordering on too much coffee initially, and then have it mellow out with time. Yeah, it's I mentioned too the much hops, rain. though. I actually I liked the hops in this beer, too. And you guys are both kind of like, oh, do you feel like you can get them? I do, because I've had plenty of way too sweet attempts at a coffee blonde, a coffee gold, whatever you want to call this. Um, I like that you, the coffee is kind of matched. What you would think the coffee would do is flavor. I think it's actually coming a lot from hops um, or in mouthfeel. And then that leaves the flavor. The aroma is insane, though. Like, when you whip this yeah, up into a it's foam, nice and it smells like opening the door into a coffee shop. Now, one mm -hmm. question that I had with the... I can't remember his name, I'm sorry, but the um, blog.kegoutlet person is... Uh, he wasn't happy with his chocolate character, so he recommended not doing this, doing this. And I was... 
I thought I did uh, quite a bit. I did three ounces. You know, I feel like I even did more than that, but it says three ounces in vodka for six days. Um, I feel like it could possibly have more chocolate character. Or I see it's, that. it's hard, it's I harder to get too. than the coffee. I when do we get first... it. I mean, I do get the chocolate. We've been eating a lot of chocolate lately, so I know what I'm looking for. But <laughs> I agree that coffee is definitely at like 90% and chocolate's at 10. Yeah. If it was if just that, a two yeah. yeah. I did not get the chocolate at first, but once it warmed up a little bit, it became more apparent on the flavor. But, yeah. So you suggested coffee. being suspended in alcohol, much like Han Solo. Ooh. That was carbonite. <laughs> You're suspended. The point is, you, You're you suspended think the, co alcohol. the chocolate will last longer, thus kind of appear to come up in, oh, in right. the percentage the of the coffee As fades. the coffee yeah. fades, it might. the tincture might be more stable. Yeah. I, that's just a hypothesis. So I what, don't know. what I will do, I think it actually is earlier in the video, the footage, but what I will do is I'll make sure that my uh, homebrew log entry is correct with how much coffee cacao nibs not coffee how much cacao nibs how long those kind of details if you want to see exactly what i did you can look at the log if you want to increase the chocolate content you may do so i can't remember what packet i bought from my homebrew store but i did not use the whole packet so however many ounces came in it i remember i i didn't use the whole thing i don't know if it comes in like six ounces six or, or eight maybe i can't remember I don't I don't know know if it's eight but at any rate um those check the details they are? Yeah, yeah, I mean, they're not like a chocolate really? chip. They're yeah. crunchy, but they're... Have to they're get, have to when we first when get we used to work in Northern and we were sourcing them, Andrew borrowed some and would be like, I have another sample bag from, you know, vendor A, and we're just like, I just like eat this them. Is, this is a side note. Personal narrative. Yeah. They're bitter as hell, but they were good. Yeah. So, I would call this a success. Uh, it was an experiment. It is. A, I did use a lager yeast, but you can certainly use your favorite ale yeast. I don't, that would make a huge difference. I mean, have you guys had a white stout from anyone? I mean, by name? Not by that name. Because there are commercial white stouts out there. And this uh, blog post was to mimic a commercial white stout that's out there. I, I, don't would, know if I, I would I've think it's on par one. with what I've had called like coffee blonde ales, coffee gold, yeah. or golden ale infused with coffee. But hmm. yeah, I don't know that I've ever had someone say white stout yeah well it's out there and i have it's not this is not me creating this style this has been around for some time Dunno, i y'all you know what's jumping up innovation i'm supreme. jumping on the bandwagon it's not even that cutting edge but i just had heard about it for a couple of years and i just wanted to give it a try so where'd you get the idea to innovate this and come up with it all by yourself drew beecham's one uh it came you. to me in a dream after drinking a lot of tequila <laughs> so you're, so you're a spirit animal that's right tequila white tequila Nice. You should infuse coffee-infused tequila. That how about, one of my how about things. raspberry infused gin? The should we do that? We can do that. Yes, please. Look at that. Yeah, let's do that. That'll be a good I never, Chip's already <laughs> suspended in alcohol like on Solo. Alright, everybody. Thanks for watching. Comment away if you've made this type of beer, if you've had success or failure. And uh, keep on brewing. Don for Don, O for O, you know, whatever. I thought you were going to say keep on brewing in the free world. And I was going to be like... Uh, no. We should do White Stout, White Heat. Like the Velvet Underground. White Stout. White Stout. Coffee. Put that cow cow dance at the back. Coming to a terrible musical parody near you. DonOsword.com. Peace.